Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we've got a special guest from New Brighton Capital, and that's Mike. How are you going? G'day, Alex. Yeah, hello. Doing very, uh, really well. Uh, I've been. I know we only, you know, met a couple of weeks ago. Spoke a couple of weeks ago, but uh, following, been following you for a long time, and you produce great content. And very happy to be on your show. Oh, thanks, mate. Well, I appreciate that. And you guys are doing a lot of work in the self-managed super fund space, which we get so many questions about. So I'll bring up your website just quickly for people to check out, newbrightoncapital.com. And it would be uh, remiss of us not to mention that this is a pretty highly regulated space, I guess, mate. So guys, there's the ASIC website here. I'll just bring that up quickly. They've got some guidelines around self-managed super funds. The ATO have got some guidelines there. And the ATO have even got some cryptocurrency specific guidelines on the self-managed super fund space. So Mike, I'm sure you're going to talk about all that with us today anyway, but um, yep. give us a Got bit of an in insight it. into your background. Yeah, sure. So on the crypto side of things, I uh, dive, dove in around about two, early 2013. So before that, I was actually uh, in the financial planning game, left there around 2011 to just be a kind of a full-time investor. And I was actually in Miami with some Forex traders in uh, early 2013. And one Friday afternoon, I stumbled across Bitcoin and it made so much sense because at that time I was, because uh, I was trading from Miami, had accounts in, uh, in Europe, in Australia, and you know, obviously in America as well. And it was an absolute nightmare trying to uh, move money around and set up new accounts. Uh, and I was spending a bit of time in South America as well. And then they shut down my account because I thought it was all fraud. So when I found Bitcoin, like, many people kind of went down the rabbit hole and literally stayed up for days and, you know, read as much as I could. And when I uh, came back up, started telling everyone about it and the guys I told about it, like these are successful guys in all, you know, ranges of trading from Forex and options and running funds and, and things like that. And every one of them said no. So for different reasons, either it was a scam or they didn't want to put their reputation to it or they just didn't understand it or they were just on a good, you know, winning thing anyway. They didn't have the time or effort or, you know, desire to learn anything else. But, uh, I basically said then and then that now nah, you guys are all wrong and this is this is serious. This is going to change the world. Pretty much been full time Bitcoin ever since. Yeah. Um, after a couple of years, I started writing a few articles published on on Bitcoin.com and ended up being um, running the sales side of things for Bitcoin.com over there across 2016, 2017. And uh, yeah, while well, I was there, just started with the idea of what I wanted to do with uh, New Brighton Capital, and and here we are today. It's crazy how often you hear stories like that, people in the know that uh, turn a blind eye to Bitcoin, I guess. So New Brighton Capital, mate, talk about super funds uh, in general and self-managed super funds have been in the news a lot this year, particularly in Australia, I guess. Yeah, all the financial industry has been getting you know, massive slaps all year for the regulation and how they've been you know, roaring people and all the rest of it. But just to move aside from that for a moment, uh, a self-managed super fund or SMSF is literally just an entity that allows you to control your super instead of uh, paying a fund manager or giving it to a retail super fund for them to run it themselves. And so it's kind of like the difference between just having a company to run it, but you're the fund manager for your superannuation. And a lot of people can get intimidated for you know certain reasons. It's either too hard or they think it's too expensive um, or too complicated. And our goal with New Brighton Capital is really just to dissolve those issues, and make it really quick and simple um, you know, at, a, at a really good price and satisfy everything as far as the ATO regulations uh, and all looking after your tax and compliance and all that back end stuff that you really you know, don't want to deal with. And so our clients can really just focus on building their portfolio, whether that's in crypto or uh, other assets as well, because obviously you're not tied to crypto with our fund. It just gives you the option to be exposed. Uh, to crypto as much as you like, as well as anything else that's allowed within a normal self-managed super fund. Yeah, and I guess that's probably the question we get a lot is, can you just put a little bit of your super fund in Bitcoin? And geez, the most volatile asset class on the planet, guys, um, you know, I'd never recommend anyone put their entire super into crypto or, you know, look how volatile altcoins have been. But it's certainly a question we get a lot of, you know, how can I put a small percentage maybe into Bitcoin and just leave it for the next 10 or, or 20 years? Is that something you get asked a lot? Yeah, and you know, obviously, yes, very volatile, very risky. Um, but a lot of the time, I, I try and educate our clients on, on on the risk side of things. It's always relative. So, like, compared to what? Compare it compared to having your super invested in. You actually don't know because most people, if you ask them what they're invested in, they might say, "I'm invested in the medium growth fund at A and P." 
that doesn't count. It doesn't count as actually knowing what, what you're invested in. And uh, so even just having the knowledge, you know, starting to understand the risk that you're currently taking with your own super before entertaining moving into anything else, um, I think is, is really important. Well, that's what started my story, I guess. Um, you know, I had that high growth fund as an 18 year old or 21 year old and um, the GFC hit. And I said to my dad, you know, do the fund managers still get paid when they lose half your money? And he's saying, yeah, I was thinking, geez, that's an easier job than the weatherman, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, heads they win, tails you lose, yeah. yeah. And so, um, uh, yeah, one of the, the main reasons why people, I suppose, do actually have, a, uh, have an SMSF and one of the main reasons why they don't is questions about the cost. So when you actually have money in a retail super fund, the more money that you have in, the more actually you pay in fees. A lot of people don't realize that you do pay fees in a, in a retail super fund, but you do. It's generally around 1% to 2%. Um, the benefit of having a self-managed super fund is, is whether you've got you know, 50 grand or 500 grand or 5 million, those costs are literally just the, uh, the cost to do the paperwork and the accounting to run the fund. So the costs are pretty much the same. And there's literally a crossover point where you're crazy not to actually have a self-managed super fund. And even if you are paying, you know, even a couple of hundred bucks more throughout the year to have the opportunity to ex- be exposed to something like cryptocurrency might not be a bad idea. So what has that threshold been, as you said, and that's something that's been the headlines a lot, how that's changed. You know, it used to be millions of dollars, you know, self-managed super fund, otherwise it's not worth it. But that's kind of changed that thinking a bit this year. Yeah. So in their media, you, if you have a look around, then you normally see the figure 150 to 200 grand to set up a self-managed super fund. That is 100% incorrect. Uh, but the reason they put those numbers out is because it generally when people were setting up self-managed super funds, they were wanting to buy an investment property within that fund. And if you're buying a property within your SMSF, you can't just put down 5%, uh, you know, and get a 95% loan. You've got to put down either up to, you know, 30 or 40%. So those upfront costs are a lot more. And you also can't negative gear within a, a self-managed super fund when investing in property. So you do need a lot more if you're looking to buy property. And also the costs to actually set up used to be really high. They still are with a lot of the, the mainstream providers around $10,000. And so if you've got, you know, 50 grand, well, do you really want to be spending 20% on setup costs? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the way we set things up, because we do everything online, everything streamlined, we don't do, offer financial advice. So we don't charge you for financial advice. Yeah. And so you can be set up for 600 bucks, um, anywhere between 600 and 1200 dollars to be set up and, and you're off and away. Yeah. So for anyone that's um, listening, what are the guidelines they need to be aware of or how easy is that to set up? You guys take care of all that now? Yeah, that's right. So normally if you were going to be setting up a self-managed super fund, you'd have to go and you know see your accountant or financial advisor. They'd charge you thousands of dollars. It would take weeks to actually set up. Um, and you know, signing it, you've got to They've got to send it in the post and you've got to sign this and that and understand. It's just, a, it is a bit of a headache. And I actually started, you know, this service on the back of my own experience trying to set up my own super fund to buy, to buy crypto in. So everything that we do, you know, within New Brighton Capital on the SMSF side of things, is exactly uh, what I'm doing for, for myself and, and my family. So what we set up, it's an online portal. Uh, it takes five to 10 minutes to fill in the form online. Within 24 hours, you've got all the all your establishment documents to be set up. We apply for your ABN and tax file number as well. Um, and that form that you actually receive within 24 hours is an electronic document. So you electronically sign. So it's literally click, sign here, date here, click, 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 click. You're all done uh, you know, within a day and you can actually take that document to the bank to actually open up your SNSF bank account uh, 90% of the time. Uh, the next day so we really have tr- streamlined the the entire process fantastic so for those people that are sitting at home um, maybe thinking about doing this it really is just that online form and within 24 hours of that um, you can have some of your self-managed super into some bitcoin or cryptocurrency if you wish yeah that's right it, there are some time frames because obviously once you set up your bank account which you can do obviously the next day uh, for you to receive the rollover from your existing super fund can take a couple of weeks for you to send that form over to them and for them to actually, you know, send that rollover into your new bank account. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just waiting for them to do their thing and obviously for the ATO to, to do their thing. But, uh, you know, the bulk of it and everything that you really need to do, you're done and dusted with a, a five, you know, five to 10 minute form and 24 hours for us to send you all the docs. Fantastic. And as you said, it used to cost thousands of dollars to set this up. Um, I believe the no upfront fees, is that right, Mike? Or 
Yeah, that's right. So there are a couple of ways that you can set up a, a self-managed super fund. One is having an individual trustee and the other is a corporate trustee. So I won't get too into the, into the weeds and what that is, but as most of your viewers, I suppose, would be familiar with the concept of being in business and having a company or being a sole trader. And so you can kind of be you know, a sole trader SMSF or a company SMSF. And the reason that you would have a company SMSF is if you were, you were pretty sure that people were going to be moving in and out of that fund um, you know, quite a bit because uh, all you need to do is change the, the name of the directors of the company that runs uh, if you want to be changing people, whereas if you've got uh, an individual trustee, you've got to change the names of all the documents all the time. So if you're, uh, so I'll let people do their own research because I can't give you know specific financial advice on what's right for you. But we do have a blog online which goes through the differences and really does outline uh, the, the two options. And so if you're going for an individual trustee, we've got a zero dollar uh, upfront process where uh, clients can actually there is a six hundred dollar establishment fee, but that gets paid from your super after your existing retail fund rolls over your funds to your new self-managed super fund bank account. So there's nothing out of your pocket. It gets paid by, for by the super fund. And that would be sole trader, someone like myself, um, who's just looking to set up their super and just leave it for the next, you know, 40 years or whatever it is and not really touch it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. So would, another reason why you would have a corporate trustee is if, for example, someone who's in the fund passes away, if you've got a corporate trustee, uh, there's no all those assets just stay the same. You just change the name of the director of the company. But if it's in a, an individual trustee, those assets need to be sold and then there can be a tax event and then redistributed. So that's another reason why people might, uh, you know, if you're a lot older uh, or people in the fund who you know, uh, just planning for that, uh, that's where a corporate trustee is actually a, a lot more beneficial. Fantastic, mate. Well, what, what else do you think it is really important for people to know? What other takeaway messages would you like for them uh, sitting at home today watching this? Well, it's really, I suppose, just about understanding uh, the risk that you currently have with you know, your, own, your own situation. And if we're going to, I suppose, talk about risk, most people's two biggest assets are their home uh, and their superannuation. So, and most people have a mortgage, so that home is owned by the bank. And the reality is that the uh, majority of the retail super funds, the major shareholders are the banks. So consider the risk that you're take, you know, taking out now. And, and uh, I suppose I'd like to maybe just touch on you know, what's happening around the world right now. So it's really easy to think that we're nice and protected in Australia yeah. because you know, things are okay. We've got a bit of inflation. We don't really like the banks and they're you know, uh, doing some bad things on the, on the regulation side of things. Yeah. But we can wake up in the morning and we've got a pretty good idea that what we've got in the bank is pretty much you know, is what we had in there yesterday. Um, and it's pretty much going to hold its value. But uh, even right now, we've got places like um, Argentina or Venezuela last week had a 95% devaluation of the currency. Like, that's crazy. And that's, that's now. You know? um, and so when, when people think, oh, no, that, you know, that's not really us, we're really far away from it. Well, what's actually happened uh, since the global financial crisis, we used to have, I'm not sure if you know, yourself, your viewers, remember the, the Australian bank guarantee, which would actually guarantee up to a million dollars in your bank account if the banks actually went under. After the GFC, they changed that to be 250 grand. And then they also put a limit on how much the banks were liable for. And that limit also takes in consideration the subsidiaries of those banks. So for example, it's not just Westpac, it's Westpac and St. George. Uh, and so if you average out those liabilities and what you could be up for, uh, that thing that used to be a million dollar bank guarantee is now only worth maybe a couple of thousand dollars if you average it out of, across all the people. And so uh, just something to, to, to take note. And it's not about putting everything into crypto, just getting a little bit of exposure, whether it's you know, cryptocurrency, art, or precious metals like gold, at least having some assets exposed to those kind of areas that you control and you own, uh, I think is... I think the other measure that people aren't aware of is the bail-ins as well. And that's what started a Bitcoin rally back in 2013 was when yeah. Cyprus did a haircut and just took money from everyone's bank account. Um, that money is no longer yours in a bank account, which is scary. That's right. And actually, a continuation of that, you know, from a million dollars to 250 grand when it's only worth a couple of grand, in February or January, February this year, the Australian government passed legislation that allowed bail-ins in Australian banks. So if you're not sure about that, just Google Australian bail-in. Um, and look, there was no coverage in the media uh, with this. Really just has been snuck in behind there. So 
you know, if, you're, if your main assets being your house and your super are exposed to the banks and the governments have literally done everything they can to de-risk themselves from the banks over the last, you know, 10 years, um, again, it's just, it's a warning sign. And I'm not saying that things are going to be turning south straight away and we're going to be crashing. We're actually pretty bullish. I do a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm very involved in trading still. Um, and I'm, you know, pretty optimistic on the Australian market, at least in the short to medium term. But at least, again, knowing the risks, knowing the game that you're playing, um, I think is really important. And the more uh, uncorrelated, diversified assets you have, I guess, the better as a general investing rule over the long term. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just uh, touching on that. So with the um, the ETFs that you know may or may not be approved moving forward, I think one of the, the most important parts of that is the fact that uh, because all global markets are so financialized more than ever before, they're all moving in the same direction more than ever before. So, you know, fund managers around the world are having a really hard time trying to diversify themselves. And that's why having assets like, you know, cryptocurrencies uh, are actually going to be really useful for them. And you can actually play the same game within your own super fund just by having a small exposure uh, to the crypto side of things. And, um, you know, riding the wave on what, what I think, and you, you probably do too, is an inevitability. Fantastic, Mike. Well, I know you've got a, um, a very special discount for our premium members, which I'll post uh, in our group, guys. But you've also yep. got a, a discount for um, all our followers as well. Yeah, that's right. So anyone who actually uh, goes through and signs up uh, to become a, a client of New Brighton Capital, like an ongoing client for the services, you'll be getting $100 off the establishment fees just by putting in Nugget in the uh, in the referral code section of the form there. So Nugget is the word of the day. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll have that uh, in the description as well, guys. But again, $100 off, no upfront fees. Um, thanks so much for joining us today, Mike, and thanks for the discount. Yeah, great. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. Cheers, guys.